Okay, thank sorry. you very uh, much. I think we'll have uh, um, Lucas next. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I guess I'm I'm the representative of the drug biotech uh, industry. I don't have any slides, but that's probably good because what I'm going to talk about is really informed by what I've heard in last uh, yesterday and, and and today. So thanks so much for for inviting me. It was really very enlightening. So I want to just talk a little bit about what we as the pharma and drug industry can contribute uh, to, to the field, and it's probably mostly up front. So I, maybe I should introduce myself. I, I lead a large oncology biomarker group uh, in research and development. We also have a, a medical affairs group, a data analytics, and so forth. So I, I guess we, we span, my group spans uh, the, the whole range. So I, I want to talk a little bit about that contribution, maybe about uh, uh, real world data and uh, just a little bit about decision supports, what our thoughts about this is. So what, what we are really trying to do is, uh, we are a science-driven organization, so as far as our therapies and drugs goes, we are really trying to uh, provide um, the, the information that lets uh, the, the patient had a journey to connect to, to our drugs, really from a scientific and sort of rational uh, po point of view. Uh, obviously, as our first goal is to show that the drug uh, works, uh, we, we are driven by the requirements that the label uh, uh, needs. Um, we, we are trying to do this by using biomarkers, by really selecting the patient populations that have the, the best chance. And that's typically uh, the indications where our drugs get uh, approved uh, first. Uh, these indications uh, are typically ra rather narrow. So, and, and obviously what you've seen today, if you then do the testing for the biomarker for that narrow population, uh, positivity may show up in other areas. Uh, so, uh, and but we, we we obviously are interested in in broadening the use of our uh, drugs. But we also want this to be um, supported by uh, a really a high uh, level of of evidence. And and there's different ways how how to do this. There's obviously further uh, cl clinical uh, trials. Uh, there's now very innovative ones where uh, you go for uh, an alteration like NTREC uh, was, was mentioned, um, uh, ROS1, RED1, this sort of rare uh, uh, mutations where we run trials, where you, where you run screenings, but it's really indication uh, uh, in, independent. Uh, there, there's been one very interesting uh, uh, approval with this with MSI high, uh, multi-satellite high, uh, uh, colorectal cancer for PL1 inhibitors. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in this area, really indication, in, independent uh, uh, approvals. Also, we two tumor mutation burden high for, for CRT, and we and others uh, participate in this. I think the good news is with the, with the growth of attention of the pharma industry to oncology, uh, we, we do have multiple drugs targeting uh, the, the same alteration, but what that leads to is that there's really more information about main indications because companies trying to identify niches where others aren't yet. Um, so to, 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 to summarize, I'm personally a bit un, uneasy seeing these screening efforts and seeing like uh, the CDK uh, for, using public like for a CDK for alteration with no data. That's not where we want to go. We really want to provide uh, uh, data even in rare indications all the way to pediatrics. Uh, to, to really show and, and, and improve the results of these screening efforts. We've seen the Gustav Receipt data yesterday where there was almost no, no difference when these sort of screening efforts were taken. And I think the, the main reason for that is that most of that was really not based on clinical evidence, but rather sort of uh, saying there's a uh, HER2 alteration. So we, we've seen the glioblastoma data, there was a HER2 alteration. We have HER2 drugs, but I would never treat the patient with that. There's just no evidence for it. So that's really what we do think our, our contribution, uh, the, the industry c can be. And, and that really leads to the, the real world data piece also. Um, so um, Amy flat was yesterday, and as you know, we have invested uh, in, in that field, uh, Roche Genentech uh, heavily. Uh, there, there's also a very close collaboration with Foundation and Flatiron uh, with, with, with overlaps where we can really uh, see what patients with certain alterations do in terms of uh, outcome, and we, we do strongly believe that this real, real world data will, will help as evidence also pairs were, were mentioned, and we, we do feel the evidence has to be there for us to, 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 to get paid for this uh, hopefully high value drugs, but they just can be high value if they work and context matters. It's not just the alteration uh, 
uh, often even the, the line of treatment uh, may help. You may have much better activity in early treatments for CIT, for example, the late stage, and again, also the tumor type uh, uh, matters. And then uh, um, I think that's, uh, I have one minute left. So I would really encourage you, you guys to ask me questions about what, what, what we do, and uh, I look for fruitful discussion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.